Hi, this is Carl, and what I want to talk about in this video and also in subsequent videos, which I hope will provide a series of recordings, is the Rosetta Stone language learning software, which is available to members of the public and an item, a product, a piece of software which is highly regarded by many language learners, particularly in the United States, where it forms a constituent part of the overall learning process of a modern foreign language in mainstream education in America and is also used in the US Army Corps and in other political administrations. And in my personal opinion, because I've used it already to learn or start learning a number of different modern foreign languages, it is, in my opinion, one of the best market products out there which you can get your hands on. Now what I'm going to do in this video and also in maybe another two three or perhaps four videos, uh, although I'm hoping not to record any more than four, is to talk about my experiences with the Residential Stone, to discuss also how it's made up, what the structure is, what the content of the course is, what its intentions are, and also how you as the independent learner can actually um, get to grips with using the course and use a few skills of your own to actually manipulate how you work and get along with the course, if that makes any sense. But everything will become clearer as the discussion actually goes on. So if you do not have the Rosetta Stone language learning software, then I would seriously recommend trying to get hold of it, either on eBay, Amazon, or maybe in a high street retailers. If you do have it already, and you want to install the software which you have, then you'll be able to see more or less what I can see here on my screen. Although my version is perhaps slightly different because on this CD-ROM, which a friend of mine has provided to me, there is a total of 26 world languages. Uh, and of those 26 languages, I can study to a maximum of two levels, although for many languages by the Rosetta Stone series, I think you can study up to a third level, as I say, on the 26 languages which I have here, I can only study a maximum of two. And also what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose a language from the list of 26 which I have, with which I'm not all that familiar. And the one which I've chosen to do, or to start looking at as part of this series of videos, is Swedish, in which currently I only know the numbers 1 to 10, as you've probably seen on another YouTube video, in which I gave the numbers 1 to 10 in a total of 22 world languages. So if you want to install the software, if you have it, and once everything's been finalized and you've got up the main menu, what you'll see on the left-hand side is a list of the languages or a language and its various levels at which you can study at. So what I have here in front of me on the menu to the left is the list of 26. So if I go down and click Swedish, then I get a chance to look at level one only. So I click level one, and then to the right, I'm brought up a total of eight units. And if I click on unit one, then to the right of the unit, I'm given the lessons which pertain to that particular unit, which I've highlighted. And in this case, for units one to four in Swedish, I'm given a total of 11 lessons to look at in each of those units. And then for the final four units, between five and eight inclusive, I'm given a total of 12 lessons per unit. That's a total of 92 lessons in Swedish which I can study. Now, in each lesson, you're given the chance to answer questions, usually in multiple choice form, and gain up to a total of 100 points per lesson. Now, I'm not sure whether the number of points which you actually obtain per question depends on how fast you're able to identify the correct answer, but I would say that on average, to get the 100 points, then you need to be answering between around uh, 65 and 80 questions. In fact, it's probably not as high as 80. It's probably more along the lines of 65 or 70. I've actually not uh, looked at how many questions I'm answering per lesson, but that's a rough estimate. Now, the structure is also very good because you obviously start off with the very basics of the language. And if we discuss what is the content of lesson one on unit one, and I know that the linguistic content is the same throughout all these languages, 
and that you study the same vocabulary and the same structures in each of the lessons. Uh, so, for example, if you were studying level three on unit one for Swedish, then that would be the same material that you'd be studying for lesson three of unit one on one of the other languages. So, if we look at lesson one, what we're given is a chance to look at isolated pieces of vocabulary, in actual fact, isolated nouns such as the translations of boy, girl, man, and woman. And then we link the nouns with the conjunction and. And then towards the end of lesson one of unit one, we're given the chance to look at mainly two prepositions, on and under, whereby we show the location of one noun in relation to another. And we may get examples such as a boy on a table, a boy under a table, a girl on a table, a girl on an aeroplane, a girl under an aeroplane, a boy under an aeroplane, and so forth. Lesson two of unit one then takes these nouns once again and applies specific third person verb forms to them. Then we get the chance to see some of those nouns pluralized and accordingly we get the third person plural verb forms accompanying those. So that's part one of the discussion about Rosetta Stone and I will be carrying forward the talk, the monologue in the next few parts.